Your code needs TypeScript guards whenever you want to allow only a specific type or a block of code. And it can take many different forms such as instance of operators, type of operators and even user defined type guards. So in this video I'm going to explain everything you need to know about TypeScript guards so that you can use it in your own projects and make your code even more robust. If you're ready, let's get started. TypeScript guards are actually part of a bigger concept called narrowing. I would definitely recommend reading more about it, but long story short, narrowing is the way of the TypeScript compiler to narrow down specific blocks of code that you write and infer types as you go. So as you're writing your code, you're gonna tell the compiler, hey, I have a guard here, do something with it. And the compiler is gonna infer types as you write. It's obviously improving the code flow. And as your code grows bigger, you're gonna catch more bugs. So it's definitely a plus. But please, please bear with me. I understand that this topic can be a bit advanced, but as we reach points number four and five, especially, it's gonna get much more easier for you to understand and you're gonna have a better overview of what's happening here, okay? We're gonna start with the first point, which is a type of guard. So imagine we have a type called alphanumeric and it can be either a string or a number, right? And here we have a function called add. Add has two parameters, a and b. And apparently both of them are alphanumeric, meaning they can be either a string or a number. And don't mind that we're already calling the function with some arguments. Here we have a type of a is equal type number. So a has to be a type of number and b has to be a type of number. So we have only one option. Both of them have to be numbers. And as I hover over a, we can see that it's a number and b is also a number. So this tooltip that you saw is coming from TypeScript. But what if we change it to string? And now the tooltip says string. So TypeScript automatically infers the type within the if block as you write your code. As simple as it is, we can also call a different function as your code grows bigger, let's say, and we pass both A and B there, and it's gonna pass the A and B with corresponding types. So imagine that your code is much bigger than this function, and as your code grows, it's gonna call different functions from one function, and TypeScript is gonna automatically infer all the types within those functions just because you used type of in the beginning of the parent function. If this was hard to understand, please bear with me as we go to the second point. And the second point is gonna be about the instance of guard. This one is very similar, although it is in the context of classes. So what we have here are two classes, class banana, which has a method and class apple, which also has a method. The first method within a banana is is tasty, which returns a Boolean. And the second one is is juicy for apple, which also returns Boolean. So they're very similar. We also have a type fruit, which can be either a banana or an apple, fair enough. And we have a function by fruit, which accepts a fruit, of a class fruit or a type of fruit, return surprise, but we don't really care. And the most important part, an if statement with a guard inside. And this guard calls a function inside, is tasty, and it's gonna return either five if it's tasty or 10. And this fruit is a type of banana, but how did it know? Well, because we put a guard inside the if statement with the help of the instance of. So we're saying that as soon as, as long as the fruit is instance of the banana class, then we assume that it's already gonna have this is tasty method. But if we try to use the different method, let's say from the apple, um, I cannot type today. Okay, is juicy. Obviously this is a method of the apple class. TypeScript is gonna start complaining, but if we change it to apple, now our guard matches the method that we're using inside the block and now everything is fine again. So again, by simply defining a guard within an if statement, TypeScript no longer complains and it's gonna help our code flow and catch the bugs in the future. The third example is with an in operator guard. So again, we have banana and apple, similar example, but now we're checking for the methods of the classes that we defined. So in the first case, we're checking if is tasty method is available within the fruit. And if it is, then logically it has to be an apple. Sorry, 
a banana. That's why in the second case, I hover over and I see fruit is apple. So TypeScript is simply clever enough to be able to infer the type just by looking into the guard that you defined and its method. Now the fourth example is the simplest, and this is gonna make everything so much clearer for you. So we have a simple function called getValues, which has uh, two parameters. So A, which can be a number or a string, and we also have B, which can only be a string. So lo logically, using our logic and using the equality, if A is equal to B, meaning it has to be a string, right? because B can only be a string. This is very logic, but TypeScript compiler is much more clever than that. So within the else block, it's gonna say that A is can A can be either a string or a number because that's the that's the only option that is left. And if I change it to B, it's gonna say that it can be a string. So equality is also a way of guarding or defining a guard that is gonna make your whole code much easier to debug. And right, and the last one, user defined guards. This is the cherry on top, but actually, that's the main type of a guard that people try to learn. But this comes up in very complex cases, so use this with the caution because it's very easy to mess it up. But we have again a buy fruit, and here we have an is banana function. But this is actually not just a function, is banana is actually a user defined guard. So it looks like a function. I mean, it is a function in a way, but it accepts a fruit. And here, fruit is banana is not just a way of defining your return value. So the return value could look something like banana, right? But it looks different. So we say fruit is banana, and this is called a predicate. You can learn more about it in the link below, but we are now saying that we are expecting a banana. And here in the return value, we're checking fruit instance of banana. And this is where you can put your custom code. And here within the if statement inside the buy fruit function, is banana already infers that it's an apple, but above you saw that it's a banana. And if we try to change it to a different way of checking our function. So let's say it's tasty in banana. As you can see, it's very flexible. It's gonna work again, the same way. Let's try to yeah change it to an apple, for example. We're gonna check is juicy in apple, and I'm gonna expect it to fail, okay? And we're gonna change the predicate as well, is apple, and now our functions are failing because it thinks that it's waiting for an apple. We're gonna switch them, and now everything should work again. But of course, the name of the user defined guard doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna change it to is apple. And I'm also gonna change it here where I'm referencing it. And now we switch the places. This is how you define user defined <laughs> guards, so to say, and they are much more flexible. But again, be careful when using them. I would say you can get along by using the operators that we saw in the first, second, and third points above. As always, if you learned anything new today, please don't hesitate to smash like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And of course, if you want to learn more about TypeScript and how to use enums in your code, make sure to check this video out. I'm pretty sure it's as interesting as the one you just watched. Have a great rest of the day.